I don't get the RAM and SSD sockets. I don't understand why those have to be permanent too. Recently, I had a customer call me. They needed a memory upgrade from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. That doesn't seem like a big problem. Pretty much any computer you, that you bought in the past six, seven years, you can move up from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. As long as it's got new enough memory standard and a couple of memory slots, you're pretty much okay. Some computers, even with a single memory slot, you're okay. But here's the problem for this customer. They couldn't get a memory upgrade and they have to buy a whole new computer because they need 16 gigabytes of RAM to do something and their computer cannot be upgraded. Well, Jody, <laughs> uh, maybe they should have bought a new computer instead of trying to get one from 12 years ago upgraded. You might be saying, oh, internet nerd friend, and you would be wrong. This computer I have pulled up here, it is a Dell XPS 13-9365. It is a 13-inch 2-in-1. It has an i7 processor and 8 gigs of RAM. And the RAM is non-upgradable because it's soldered to the motherboard. This computer is from 2017, four years ago. When this computer was new, it was basically $1,000 if you paid full retail price thousand dollars a thousand dollar computer four years ago that came with eight gigs of ram that you can't upgrade because there's not one memory slot there are no memory slots so this person paid a thousand dollars for a computer four years ago that cannot be upgraded now here's the problem had they gotten an xps 15 it would have been upgradable but in the name of thinness Oh, we can't have that memory slot sticking up off of the system board. Oh no, that would be bad. So we have to we have to just solder that memory right to the board. Yeah. Now yeah, that that this is fine. In in the name of 0.1 inch thinness on this tiny laptop, permanently soldered memory totally okay. Just to, just permanently solder everything. Just while you're at it, glue it down for fun. Just to throw a layer of epoxy over the whole board, just for kicks. Um, they didn't really do that, but that's the mentality. It's just like, there's no reason it had to be 0.1 inch thinner. And I think that manufacturers really have spent too much time trying to give people ultra thin laptops when people aren't asking for that. People aren't running around going, oh God, I, I wish this 13 inch laptop that I had was just a tiny, tiny fraction of an inch thinner in exchange for having to spend a thousand more dollars in four years to get 16 gigs of RAM. And that's the thing. I'm tired of non-upgradable computers. We are seeing this horrific push towards this nightmare world where Windows 11 is going to force you to have secure boot in the trusted platform module turned on or it just won't work which is part of the process of locking your computers down so that Microsoft can control them so that you can't do what you want with them. But then you've got this. On the hardware side, non-upgradable, anti-repair. It's, it's same thing as Apple. This is basically uh, just like a MacBook. It's, it's a thin, non-upgradable, overpriced computer. Um, overpriced? Why overpriced? Because it's an i7Y series. It's an ultra, ultra low power processor. Not fit to be called an i7 in the first place. But this is, this is a thousand dollar computer four years ago and they're already having to replace it just because they needed more RAM and there's no excuse for it not being there. We're, all of the computers now, you, every laptop now has a CPU permanently attached. <clears throat> Half of desktops now are basically laptops in a desktop motherboard form factor with no display, obviously. It, it's really frustrating because now you have tons of computers out there that there are no prospects for upgrading the CPU. And everybody else is starting to follow Apple's lead, 
permanently attached RAM to get a tiny bit more thinness, permanently attached solid state storage to get a little bit more thinness, which means that 128 or 256 or whatever gigabyte solid state drive that's permanently attached to the board can never be upgraded. If you need an upgrade, you either shove something in the side or you go spend $1,000 on another new computer whenever you hit that particular threshold. This is very annoying and frustrating, and I understand to some extent with the CPUs, for example, the sockets were much thicker um, at one point anyway. The sockets do add quite a bit to the thickness and you have to slap a cooling system on top of that. So a thick CPU socket does make a bigger difference, but these RAM sockets, they're so small. The sockets that the solid state drives go in, they're so small too. There's no excuse for not having those sockets. Okay, I get the CPU socket thing. I don't get the RAM and SSD sockets. I don't understand why those have to be permanent too. It's, it's annoying and I don't like it and I'm, I don't like this trend. The software and the hardware are getting to the point where the software is going to be controlled by Microsoft. They're trying to close in the garden, so to speak, so that it's more like um, Android or ideally for them iOS where everything's controlled through a singular app store and Microsoft is the ultimate gatekeeper and um, that's what they're doing with Windows 11 and the Windows 11 hardware requirements then you have on the hardware side of things the manufacturers are making everything non upgradable and non repairable so that you have to go out and buy a whole new computer and the thing that caused me to make this video is that this just happened to one of my customers I literally ended the call by saying you're going to have to buy a whole new computer. I'm sorry. And they sighed and they thanked me. And that was the end of the call. But that was their only option. It was their only option. And I think if you spend a thousand dollars on a laptop, you better get some upgradability in that. But this is not something that you see on spec sheets. This is not something that they're going to put up on the little card with the features in the store. They're not going to say, oh, you have a, an upgradable RAM. You have two DDR4 memory slots. You have an M2 slot. You know, they're not going to tell you what expandability you have anymore because people just, they don't really shop like that. They just see numbers and they compare the numbers, which is why an i7 is better than an i3, which is why a Ryzen 5000 is better than a Ryzen 3000, which is why 16 gigs of RAM is better than eight, and why a 500 gigabyte hard drive is better than a 128 gigabyte solid state drive. Oops. Yeah, that's the problem. We as consumers as a whole are not intelligent enough in our purchases of thousand dollar electronic products. And manufacturers know this and sellers know this so they don't list that information. What we need is to start seeing that information again. At the very least they could put that it's expandable. They could put that the RAM can be replaced, that the solid state drive is upgradable in the future. Even if it just said 8 gigs of RAM expandable to 32 gigabytes or uh, 128 gigabyte PCIe solid state drive upgradable. That's all it would take. We need to start seeing that and we need to look for that if we don't see that. You should demand upgradability and repairability in the electronics that you purchase, especially computers, especially if something's hitting four dollar digits, four digit dollars. You need to demand that upgradability. With that said, um, I think that's enough for now. And I hope that this has been educational and that it will help you avoid making some bad financial choices down the line. Anyway, look down there for support links where you can send me cash because, you know, why not get paid to talk to a glass circle right here? Ah, like, comment, subscribe, visit my website, look at my other videos. Go check out my political channel, Jody Spicy Takes, where I'm throwing all the annoying political videos off to so that they won't be mixed in with these computer videos. Go look at my other other channel. I have a channel where I've posted some commercials I ripped from VHS tapes. Um, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's something like Jody's Archive. I'll actually look real quick because um, I want to make sure you get it right. Jody Bruchon's stock footage and VHS archive. 
and that's my channel with a bunch of VHS commercials and uh, bumpers and stuff that I pulled off old VHS tapes that my family's had for 30 years, 20, 30 years. Uh, anyway, go check out all my stuff, give me some money, and have a wonderful day, and I appreciate you. Take care.